What's up everyone, this is Cybernad, and today I have a very special video for you guys because this video is actually sponsored by Konami. So yeah, they wanted to work with me and uh, I'm going to talk about speed duels with you guys today. Of course, uh, first off, with speed dueling, we have both of the brand new starter decks. These came out, I believe, in January. I did openings on these two. We're going to go through them again. I'm going to explain how speed dueling works. But if you guys want to see uh, another kind of version of this that's more in-depth than going through the cards and stuff, too, I'll have, like, uh, my other opening in a card thing or, or whatever it is uh, on YouTube. So you guys can click on that, and you can see that video as well. But also, we're going to open up the brand new speed duel set, which is Arena of Lost Souls. This set isn't even out yet, so that's what makes this really awesome. And of course, if you guys just want to skip to that because you know how speed dueling works, I'll have like in the comments or something a link that you can just click on and you'll just go straight to that part of the video. And also, real quick, before I forget, uh, be sure to check out Yu-Gi-Oh! Day on April 6th and 7th because uh, you can learn more about speed dueling during Yu-Gi-Oh! Day. So I have a link in the description so you guys can check out and see if the event is going on around you because it'll be at a bunch of different stores. But anyway, let's go on ahead and talk about speed dueling by opening up these starter decks. All right, so we'll go with this one first, which is Destiny Masters. With each of these starter decks, too, you're actually getting three decks of cards, and then it's the three characters on the front. So you get one for a deck of cards for Pegasus, Yugi, and then, of course, Ashizu, and then the other one has uh, Mai, Kaiba, and Joey. So let's get to it. All right, now that I've opened up our starter deck, uh, one of the things you're going to notice from this is that you get a play mat. This will help you out with, you know, giving you your zones where you can play your cards and everything. You have a graveyard, deck zone, field spell zone, extra deck, and then, of course, you only have three main monster zones and three spell or trap card zones. So with speed dueling, it's, uh, well, it's a faster version of regular dueling, obviously, as the name suggests. You start off with 4,000 life points, you draw four cards at the beginning of a duel, and then you have a smaller playmat to use. This form of Yu-Gi-Oh! 2 goes back with the older rules, so you don't have things like Link Summoning, uh, Pendulum Summoning, XC, or Synchro. And even your main deck of cards, you have to have at least 20 cards and at most 30. So, again, it's to kind of simplify everything and make it so that these duels go by fast and, honestly, are pretty easy for a new person to learn. So, of course, there's your playmat. That kind of helps you out on that. You also have your rules and everything, too, basically teaching you the game. And, honestly, not much has really changed with the game. The only difference is, again, the ones I already talked about to make everything simpler. And then, also, you have the new skill cards. You only get one skill card to use per duel. You just leave it face down. We'll get to those here in a second. I'll go through all of them. But they kind of give you special abilities. Think Duel Links, really. It's kind of the best comparison with it. Each uh, of these skill cards can help you during the duel, like power up your monsters. Some are like field spells or do all kinds of just crazy things themed around that character. So they're pretty neat. It's like, like I said, it's like having a special ability like you see from something like Duel Links. And then even, this is talking about something right here, which I think people will want to know about, is that you can use speed duel cards in regular Yu-Gi-Oh, but you can't use non-speed duel cards in speed duels. So they actually have to have the watermark right there that says speed duel. Um, yeah, here it is on these right here. This is one of the promo packs you get from Star Deck. As you guys can see, it's kind of hard to tell in the lighting, but right there it says speed duel. Again, it's tough to see. You can see a lot easier in person, obviously. But yeah, that's how you know. So only speed duel cards in speed duels, but you can use them in regular duels. And then for, we'll go with this, I guess, set of the decks. First off, we have Pegasus, then one for Yugi, and then one for Ishizu. Each one of these has everything you need to play the game. So we'll go with Yugi, of course. I mean, you might as well. So yeah, there's a card list on this side. We're just going to go through them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You can just fill that. And you have your skill cards and everything in this. And also, I should say real quick, too, going back to this, each of these starter decks, you get your three decks of cards, you get your field, and then you get this little pack of uh, promo cards. So I'm going to kind of move on to these real quick. It's just three ultra rares that you get that you can use in speed duels. So they're pretty cool looking, too. Shard of Greed. You have uh, the Golden Apples and Mimic Cap. So you can kind of see the theme going around with this. Another card for Pegasus and... Yeah, you can use these with any deck. I mean, you can mix and match the cards, obviously, on that, but they have to be speed duel cards. So, yeah. But yeah, I wanted to say that real quick, because you do get some guaranteed hollows out of these as well, which is pretty cool. But yeah, here's a difference, too. You can't use skill cards in a regular duel. These are only for speed duels, so that's another thing on this, too. Here's what a skill card will look like whenever it's on your side of the field. When you actually play it, let me make a little bit of room, where you actually play it is faced out with the character, this side of the character showing, right next to the deck. And that's where you play it. And then you activate it when you're supposed to activate it. 
Some cards are different. Some of them, like, uh, let's see, this one right here, it says you activate it at the start of the duel. Because this one basically becomes a field spell. It's uh, Yami. <laughs> if you guys remember that uh, field spell, it's one that automatically will activate then when your duel begins, when the duel begins, and you just go on ahead and you'll put it in the field zone. And it's a simple field spell where it basically just powers up monsters. So that's one of them, for example. You also have other things too, like Destiny Draw, which, uh, you know, is kind of thing around Yugi being able to get the right card when you need it. And this is something you would activate when you need it. Basically, though, the advantage you get by having these face down is that your opponent doesn't know what card you have, what skill you have. They might know the character, of course, but they don't know which card you chose. So it kind of gives you a little bit of element of surprise, too, which is very helpful. So here's some of the other ones. Of course, we have Final Draw. And then after that, you're getting your usual cards you're used to seeing. I mean, you have, like, Dark Magician, Feral Imp, a lot of uh, Yugi's cards, and some others, too, mixed in. Of course, Dark Magician Girl as well. And yeah, some iconic cards, some cards that just go good with speed dueling and to kind of balance out the deck. Thousand Knives, well, Sage of Stone, Dark Magic Attack, a lot of different cards that uh, just bring back a ton of nostalgia anyway. So yeah, just a lot of useful cards for that. Of course, then we'll also go through the other ones. With the Shizu, her skill cards are mainly based around how in the anime, how she had the um, Millennium Necklace. Well, she's able to see the future. That's kind of how her skills work, too. So, again, it kind of just depends on the character. You can tell how they're themed around each one. She also has ones that helps out Gravekeepers and everything, too. Again, I go more in-depth with these in my other opening, but since we're going to open up the new packs and everything, too, and kind of review the game as a whole, I can't really spend too much time and go over every little detail. But I mainly want you to be able to watch this video, understand how to play the game, and see what's coming out for it, and kind of get my idea on what I think about it. So that's why I'm kind of uh, glossing over a little bit of that, but yeah, you can easily, uh, I actually read over all the skill cards in my other video, so check that out. More of the Gravekeepers, so yeah, basically with hers, it's all Gravekeepers, a lot of different ones that we've had for a while, so it's pretty cool to see, and different cards that go with them. I mean, pretty simple on that, like I said, it's a pretty uh, easy thing that you can see what, what's going on. And then, of course, this one we'll go through with Pegasus, which, <laughs> again, you know what Pegasus is going to do. I mean, it's Toon Monsters with this, which is awesome. One of his skill cards is actually Toon World, so you get that easily. And he even has one of his abilities where the Millennium Eye, which makes it so he can look at his opponent's hand and gives you an advantage, like just like from the show. He can look at his opponent's hand. Then, of course, a lot of his different cards from that, too. Dark Rabbit, even. Bunch of the Toon Monsters as well. And even Relinquished is in this, too. Two table of Contents. A lot of the good reprints, too, for Toons. I kind of wish Toon Kingdom, though, was part of this, you know? But unfortunately, it is not. And then, of course, for the other decks of cards, too, we have one for Mai, Joey, and Kaiba. We'll go through these real quick, too. Because, again, the themes that they have are pretty interesting. And especially with Mai... From the current Speed Duel meta, which will probably change with this new set coming out, Mai is actually the strongest deck to use, from what I've heard. So it's pretty interesting. Again, like her skills revolve around powering up her monsters, which makes it so that Harpy Ladies and Amazonas can actually work together, which is actually pretty powerful. But her first card right here, that Aroma Strategy, goes with the show how she was able to, uh, you know, see what card she was going to draw from the different perfumes she put on it. That's how that works. So again, it's a callback to the show and gives you a skill that can help you get whatever cards you need. So again, I love the idea of bringing, basically bringing Duelist Kingdom, what the stuff they did in Duelist Kingdom, which didn't always go with the rules, into the game. So yeah, I think that's cool. Of course, Joey. You know that Joey is my favorite character. And <laughs> of course with him too, you know that all his skill cards are basically going to be luck-based. And... Nobody has luck like Joey does. <laughs> so hopefully you do and it can work out like that for you. But uh, yeah, he even has a fusion card, basically, like a polymerization. What's cool, though, about his deck is it's the only one out of the starter decks that actually has some fusion monsters. Because, like I said, fusion monsters are the only extra deck monsters in speed duels right now. So pretty interesting to see that. You saw the polymerizations, of course. And it's kind of neat that he really is the only one that can do that right now. So you have Flame Swordsman, Thousand Dragon, and of course, even Alligator Sword Dragon. All very useful on that. 
And the last one is for Seto Kaiba. And <laughs> just like with the others, you know what Kaiba's going to do. This is no surprise. So he has his own field spell card, which will power up his dragons. But yeah, basically just ways to get out Blue-Eyes White Dragon. We know what he's going to do on that. Of course, there's your Blue-Eyes White Dragon as well. Uh, might be the strongest card in, in Speed Duels, <laughs> technically. Even like the old days with Yu-Gi-Oh! In terms of attack like that, probably is. So it kind of brings back those old memories. Lord of D to help bring him out. Tyrant Dragon even, which that's pretty cool to see. Kaiba Man, Flute of Summoning Dragon. And yeah, I mean, basically with his skill cards and everything, it's just easier ways to get out Blue Eyes, as you would expect from the guy that flies a Blue Eyes White Dragon jet. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much what you're getting from the, the starter decks themselves. And uh, also too, with the other deck, here's the other promo pack, by the way. We'll open that up just in case you haven't seen that. But yeah, it's just three more Ultra Rares that you're getting to help power up the decks that you want to use. So, here we go. Champions of Vigilance, Fusion Gate, which is definitely going to come in handy for you, and then Amazonas Village, which is a great addition for Mai. With her Amazonas cards and everything, yeah, that's pretty powerful to have something like that too. It's a good field spell for her. And just with the Star Decks themselves, like I said, I didn't open on them. I went through the whole thing in a different video. But as kind of a quick summary... I think they're definitely worth picking up. If you want a review that's just them, they're worth picking up, in my opinion, because you're getting three decks of cards. That's enough to, you know, have enough cards for you and your friends to play the game and actually are able to switch between take turns and dueling. And you have three different decks to use with just one starter deck. If you're getting two, then you have all six. And for the price points they're at, they're about $10 per starter deck. Might actually be a little bit cheaper, depending on where you look. And honestly, I think it's worth it. If you're interested in speed dueling, it's a good start for that, and getting that many characters together, that many skill cards, and again, just the varieties that you can do with that is pretty awesome. So for for my recommendation, my review on that, I would say it is definitely worth picking up for the starter decks. And that's not, you know, even though this is a sponsored video by Konami, my opinion is still my opinion. And I think if you're interested in speed dueling at all, it, it's a good deal. I mean, they, they did a good job with that. Now, of course, let's move on to the brand new set, which is Speed Duel Arena of Lost Souls. So yeah, this is the brand new set that is getting released to help add more speed duel cards to your collection. And honestly, from what's been revealed so far, I think there's only been a handful of cards that have been revealed so far. So I don't know really what to expect besides uh, Bones is actually part of this as a skill card. And of course, our Arcana Knight Joker, which is on the cover. So let's get to it. Basically, too, if you don't know, these only have uh, four cards per pack. So they're kind of like duelist packs in a way, too. They are cheaper booster packs to pick up as well. It's not the normal price of regular booster pack. So kind of think of them as uh, duels packs, sort of. Have common charity. Of course, they all have speed duel right there. They can kind of see with the light. So always make sure you have that watermark on there. Jack's Knight, Buster Blader, and Zombie Clown. It's kind of cool. I haven't seen that card in a while. Yeah, one of Bones' cards that he used. So if you guys don't know who Bones is, by the way, remember the zombie duelist in Duelist Kingdom? Yeah, the creepy looking guy that looks like a zombie. Yeah, that's who it is. So if you've never watched the original series, you probably have no idea who I'm talking about. We also have Veil of Darkness. Wow, I don't remember that one being revealed yet, so that's cool. Then Possessed Dark Soul. Whiptail Crow. Remember getting that card back in the day. And then Magical Ghost. So yeah, it looks like you're not guaranteed a rare or hollow. I don't know the ratios yet because, again, this is still... A new set for me as well because we don't even have the full spoiler as I'm opening these up. So I don't know what to expect, but I do know there are hollows in this set. So we'll see. Gravekeeper's Ambusher. New card for Shizu. Oh, a new fusion. I hadn't seen this. I think that was from the tournament pack back in the day. Great Mammoth of Goldfine. That's cool. Block Attack and Magicians Unite. I can see that coming in handy for Yugi because we do have Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl. Trying to be careful with four cards. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> I was about to say with four cards, I'm trying to be very careful because I don't want to mess them up as I'm opening them. But we got a skill card. Oh, man, this is one for Ishizu. I think this one's been revealed. But what does it do? Okay, it's the last one, so we'll get to it. Uh, Amazon is Spy, uh, Shield and Sword, and Skull Servant. Oh, that's funny. Skull Servant's in this. But, oh, it is an Ultra Rare. Uh, I didn't know if it was going to be a common or what. That's awesome. They actually have a hollow skill card. Uh, yeah, this one is Tomb of the Pharaoh. So basically, it's uh, Necro Valley as a skill card. So this is one of those that you would activate at the beginning of a duel, right? 
Now what it says, yeah, at the start of the duel you activate it, it's Necro Valley. So it's pretty much that simple. Looks really awesome though. And you can see the speed duel on it a lot easier too. Oh, that's cool. Well, we actually got a hollow. I'm glad I got one of the skill cards too. That's what I was mainly hoping for because, you know, they're the new cards really. Let's try to get the one for bones as well. I'm gonna open this one kind of weird. All right, Half Shut, The Rabid Horseman. Oh, I haven't seen that in a while. Whiptail Crow, and then White Elephant's Gift. Oh, and some of these actually, you know what? I didn't notice that here. Let me show you guys what I just noticed. Actually on these two, they do say Speed Duel. It's not like that on the starter deck cards. So I guess to make it a little bit easier, because that watermark is tough to see, especially on camera. I mean, you can still see it right there where it says Speed Duel, but it's right there as well, where it used to say First Edition. So I just saw that it actually did that. That's a lot better. I, I like how they did that because it, it's kind of tough to see otherwise. So yeah, makes it a little bit easier to tell. Ambusher, Rabbit Horseman, and we got a super rare. Oh, I remember getting this from the, the PC game. It is uh, Sword of Dragon Soul. Oh, that is awesome. I think it's one of the cards. I think Joey used this, actually. That is really cool. Or maybe it was Yugi. Either way, it was to go against dragons. So, I, for some reason, I'm thinking Joey, but I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've seen some of the original series. I have to admit. But I do remember that was actually in the, the PC game back in the day. So, that's really cool. I'm going to try that one out. That's going to be good to use against anyone with dragons. So, like Kaiba and, I guess, even Joey. That would come in handy. Snake hair. Violet crystal. And another uh, Ultra Rare. Oh, this is the one I always have a hard time saying. I I'm sorry, I'm going to mispronounce this. Uh, Mika Shizer? Is that how you say it? I yeah, I remember this from the old video games, basically. And I know I never say it correctly. But that's really cool to see. That's the one that uh, when a monster is sent from the field to the graveyard during the damage step, you can just target a monster in the field and destroy it. So it's like, you know, you get rid of my monster, I'm taking one of yours down too. That looks really awesome too. I like seeing that again. I think it was an Ultra Rare back in the day as well. I know it was at least a hollow. Oh man. <laughs> I'm enjoying this because I, I don't know what to expect at all. Mystic Horseman makes sense. It could be a Rabbit Horseman. See, uh, oh, the Wicked uh, Breaking Flameberg. It's kind of cool one of the Guardian cards. And Harpy's Pet Dragon. Oh man. That is weird to see as a common, isn't it? Uh, that makes sense though. I mean, my has her Harpy Ladies and her starter deck, so you could actually use Harpy's Pet Dragon now. That's awesome. It's a good reprint, too. Harpy's Pet Dragon's always kind of on the expensive side, really. And again, you can use these cards in a regular duel. That is actually okay. You know, I keep saying that, but I, I got that question a lot with the other opening. So I want to make sure people know that. Clown Zombie. Diffusion Wave Motion. Limit Impulse. And Possessed Dark Soul. I feel like that's going to come in handy, too. In a game like this, the way the way it is now, kind of going back to the old days of using uh, some weaker monsters, that could actually be pretty good. Only, I think we have three packs left. Okay. What else can we get, guys? Can we get another skill card? That's what I want. Block attack. Zombie tiger. The shallow grave. And, oh, another one of that mammoth. That does look cool. Again, I think that was a tournament pack card. So, that brings back a lot of memories. I love old fusion monsters. All right, two more. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the, uh, really any of the knights. I think we got King's Knight or something. Maybe it was Jack's Knight. So far, not too much luck getting those. I'd like to use them. Oh, <laughs> that brings back some memories. Dispel. Wow, I never thought I would see this card again. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Dragon Zombie, Veil of Darkness, and uh, Common Charity. But yeah, D-Spell. Wow, that was our original Mystical Space Typhoon that negated, right? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't, but that's what we thought back in the day. So that is hilarious. That was kind of the start of that. And last pack. Okay, what are we ending with? Can we end with a hollow? Let's see, because I'm hoping we get something cool. I really want another skill card. But I don't know how tough skill cards are to get. Doesn't look like it, though. I think they're usually the last card. All right, we have the snake hair, 
Common Charity, Possessed Dark Soul, and we ended with a Hollow. I'll take that. King's Knight. So, yeah, we ended up getting another one. That card works out great. I'm Cyber Knight. Get King's Knight. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So, not bad. We actually got quite a few Hollows from this. So as a recap for everything we got from Arena of Dark Souls, we were able to actually get two Ultra Rares, which I'm really happy about, especially one of them being a skill card. That's awesome. And then we also got two Super Rares. So out of 12 packs, uh, that seems similar to the ratios that we've seen from Duelist packs. But again, too, these packs have less cards in them, so uh, they're going to be cheaper to get and everything, too. But just as a starting set for Speed Duels, uh, my review, or what are my opinions, I should say, is that it looks pretty interesting. I mean, honestly, I don't know really what to say about it yet because it, it kind of seems to be one of those things like, yes, if you are interested in the starter decks, you played using the starter decks and you enjoyed that, obviously you're going to want to expand on that and get these booster packs and add to it. The new skill cards look really cool. It's a way, again, of using like the, the different ways that they bend the rules, I should say, in Duelist Kingdom and kind of like you're actually playing as that character, whatever your favorite character is. It's just really interesting, a different twist on the game. Not only that too, with it being its own format, you're able to use a lot of these older cards that, I mean, really, I don't know if you could really use any of these cards I got from these packs in, in the regular game of Yu-Gi-Oh! But in Speed Duels, they can actually work and make sense. And again, I like that idea. Being able to use older cards again, that brings back nostalgic players that want to get back to the game that maybe they just feel overwhelmed with how the game's changed, you know? and Or just somebody that wants to learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! but you don't want to just throw them in the deep end. This is a good way to get them into it. So I feel like it's a smart move on Konami's part to do Speed Duels and uh, to, of course, add an expansion set to add to that. So just, you know, adding something new to Speed Duels, I mean, it's it comes down to, do you like Speed Duels? You're going to want to pick up this expansion set. If you don't like Speed Duels, you're not interested in it, it's not for you. It's really that simple on that. But yeah, as always, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video or if it helped you out with uh, trying to decide if you want to get some of these Speed Duel uh, starter decks or, you know, or want to get the new set as well as uh, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss out on future content because like I said, I will open up a box of this set so you might want to see uh, what I get from that and how easy it is to get certain cards and also anything that comes out for Yu-Gi-Oh! Whether it's in English or Japanese, I do openings on. So if you want to stay updated with everything Yu-Gi-Oh! Be sure to hit that subscribe button. You won't regret it. Of course, thank you to Konami for letting me review their product early like this too. That was really cool of them and I will catch you guys later. See ya.